will continue our studies on conventional crop improvement techniques. Next comes the introduction of genetic variability by artificial means. This is the conventional method of breeding. So, the conventional method of plant breeding, this is, can be considered as a manipulation means alteration in the chromosome level that is combination of chromosomes can be altered to get a hybrid plant. So in general there are three main procedures to manipulate the chromosome level of the plant that is the given population are being, which is having a desired characteristics that has been selected and further it is used for the purpose of breeding as well as cultivation. This is called as a pure line selection. After the selection of the pure line, the desired trait containing plants, when they get a good population of plants, these plant lines are combined together with the another good trait containing plants so that it exhibits the both the traits simultaneously. This method is called as a hybridization. So, what are the steps involved in the hybridization? What do we do is, we take a two parent plant, it is having both like for example, this is a disease resistance plant, that is a parent A and parent B is a drought resistant. When we cross both of them, a hybrid plant is obtained and then we have to back cross it and it is continuously done until we get a pure stable lines so that you have a desired characteristics of both the plant that is parent A and parent B desired characteristics containing plant we get until then it has been repeatedly pollinated and selected. So next comes what are the steps involved in this hybridization. The steps which are being involved in this hybridization is a choice of the plant. That is the choice of the plant is the first step involved in this process. What we have to do is we have to choose the parents that are involved in the crosses and should be well adapted to that environment. These plant whichever we choose it should be a well adapted to that and one of them should not be adapted to that environment. Okay and then comes the evaluation of the parents what is this evaluation of the parents means its performance of the parents that is when they are crossed the performance of the parents in that particular area have to be done then comes the emasculation emasculation is the removal of stamens and anthers from the female reproductive organ of the plant so that it prevents the self-fertilization in the flowers. If it is there, they get fertilized, right? In order to avoid that, you have to do a emasculation, okay? And then after that, emasculation can be done either by using a forceps or by hot water treatment or by suction method, anything. After that, you have to do a bagging. Bagging means immediately after emasculation, the flowers or the inflorescence uh, get enclosed in the suitable bags so that to prevent the cross pollination. So, bagging has to be done. Along with that, tagging is also done. You can see here. Tagging means when it is made, which is the female plant, which is the male plant. Bagging always use a butter paper or a cloth should be used. And after that, bagging and tagging, then the pollination means a fertile and a viable pollen that is present from the male parent should be placed on a respective stigma. Okay, after that the pollination is done and then emasculated flowers to bring about the fertilization. After that the fertilization is brought and the pollen grain is collected. And then after that it is harvested and soft sorting is done for the F1 seeds and cross heads or pods they are harvested 
and the seed should be dried and properly stored to protect them from the storage pests. This is how the hybridization technique is being carried out. Next, coming on to the types of hybridization, there are two types of hybridization that is intervarietal hybridization and distinct hybridization. Intervarietal hybridization means the parents involved in the hybridization, they belong to the same species. Okay, and these are commonly used in the improvement program of the crop, like cro crossing of two varieties, wheat and other crops. And coming on to the intraspecific hybridization the crosses are made between the two individual that belong to the same species this is actually done in order to increase the crops producing in order to help the self-pollinated crops and interspecific what is this interspecific is the crosses that are made between the individual but they belong to a different varieties but of a same species they are made to improve the self pollinated and certain cross pollinated crops and coming on to the distinct hybridization the parents that are involved in this process belong to a different species but they belong to a same genes but of a different genera means different generation they are in they are of two types intrageneric and intergeneric what is this intrageneric hybridization crosses are made between the two individuals that belong to the different species but they belong to the same generation different species but they belong to the same generation are called as intrageneric okay and it is used to produce a resistant varieties like from disease frost drought varieties plants can be done by a hybridizing intrageneric population plants and then comes the intergeneric hybridization these type of crossings are made between the individuals of a different generation that belong to a same family same family plants which belong to a different generation are being crossed so that a desirable combination of all the characteristics can be brought there like brassica and raphis forms a raphanus brassica okay this is one of the example moving on to the next slides here you can see there are different types of mutation breeding the types of mutation breeding these are being carried out in order to bring a genetic variations through a changes in the sequences there are two types that is spontaneous and induced spontaneous is a frequency rate rather it is very low and difficult but induced mutations like physical and chemical here the chromosomal abrasions takes place and a point mutation where the plant part is being exposed to a neutrons alpha rays and gamma rays when they are exposed to that there will be a variation in the genetic level and either it might give a good yield or else lesser seeds like that product or anything the activity of the plant only dies but here in the chemical mutagenesis what happens is the chemicals is being applied to particular part of the plant so that the mutation takes place in a that is a point mutation as a result you can get a higher yield or resistance to diseases here is an example of a mung bean you all are aware of that so when this mung bean is a resistance to yellow mosaic virus and a powdery mildew because they were being induced by the mutation and moving on to the next slide here you can see the polyploidy polyploidy is the occurrence of more than two sets of chromosomes most of the plants we know are diploid right the plants with three or more complete set of chromosomes are commonly they are called as a polyploids okay when there is a increase in the number of sets of chromosomes per cell like if it is not 2n if it is a set of 2 uh, two, 2 chromosomes that is set of 3 set of 4 set of 5 these are called as a 
polyploids and this can be artificially induced by applying certain chemical like colchicine colchicine is one of the chemical that has been applied for the part of the plant so that the polyploid number of set of chromosomes can be obtained that actually leads to the good crop variety where doubling of chromosome number they affect the increase in size and genetic variability of the plant okay a polyploid plants are often have a lower fertility and they have a much grow in a very slowly way that is the problem in this uh, polyploidy variation and there are uh, different types of uh, polyploidies that is one among them is a auto polyploidy and hollo polyploidy before that we'll know the ploidies okay that is euploidy polyploidy whose somatic cells contain exact multiples of haploid sets of chromosomes are called as euploidies and aneuploidies are those plants somatic cells they do not contain the exact copies of the haploid cells those are called as aneuploidies and the next slide you can see that here is a polyploidy induction as i said in the earlier thing that colchicine treatment actually helps in the production or increasing of number of sets of chromosomes right this are uh, here you can see the normal diploid branch the other branch of that same plant terminal bud colchicine is applied to the terminal blood of bud of this uh, branch so that it becomes a tetraploid so cutting of four, foreign branches will produce again the four number of foreign number of plants with the foreign number of flowers fruits and here you can see the um, size of the leaves as well as the fruit is also increased this is the beauty of the polyploidy induction and naturally occurring polyploidy plants are watermelon banana seedless watermelon which is having a triploid okay triploid and this is also tetraploid peanut and blackberries hexaploid is a sweet potato and octop octoploid is a strawberry so moving on to the next slide that is a limitation of conventional crop breeding first one is a slow and time consuming process it might take about 6 to 10 years for the growth of the new plant and limited to genetic diversity means the low genetic variation means the raw material for the evolution without the genetic variation the population cannot evolve so the changing environment variables they may face an increased risk of extension like when they are genetically you know in the next generation they have to transfer their alleles to the next generation when they stop transferring their alleles or when they tra stop transferring their you know hereditary material then there will be a chance of extension and hybridization barriers in plants like naturally hybridizing plants they frequently occur in plants but they can facilitate the gene flow in between the species that results in the species refusion also there are various reproductive barriers that blocks the formation of the hybrids so this is one of the limitation and one other thing is a morphological differences there are three major causes for this morphological differences maybe due to the environmental factors or due to the positional effects of the genes or the position of the chromosome where it has been situated so these are the things that help that actually forms the limitation of conventional crop breeding technique and differing timings of fertility or blooming period differences there are chances that the fertility of the flower plants and then the blooming period they may differ from each other or fertility differs or the blooming period differences of the plant takes place 
and then comes the different pollination vectors are needed like there are two types of vectors that is abiotic as biotic all those things are required for the pollination process okay and one more thing is a somatoplastic sterility it is a type of a sterility which is been told or which is been first discovered by nicotiana hybridization working on a interspecific hybridization in nicotiana where cooper and brick was the person who reported it and this actually causes a factors occ occlusion means enlargement or ovule abortion takes place and this phenomena is called as somatoplastic sterility the cooper and the brick was the person who worked on this somatoplastic sterility where they reported that there will be a growth in the inner integument and a hyperplasia of the nucleus and these factor they cause the abortion of the ovule and comes the structural differences there may be a resulting in the duplication deletion or rearrangement of the chromosome material as a result there will be a structural differences in the chromosomal pattern like polyploidy aneuploidy or any other changes from the normal pattern thank you